families and periods. In this section, we're going to learn about um, how those families and periods actually help us to tell certain things about uh, the elements on the periodic table. So families. Columns of elements are called groups or families. Okay, Elements in each family have similar but not identical properties. Not identical properties. For example, lithium, sodium, and potassium and other members of family 1A are all soft, white, shiny metals. So uh, all of these exhibit specific and yet uh, similar uh, similar properties, okay? And you can tell that based on their position on the periodic table. This will come into play when we talk about how certain elements and certain compounds and molecules have um, specific physical properties as well as chemical properties like boiling points, uh, melting points, uh, different things like that. Now, periods are each horizontal row um, of the periodic table. The elements in a period are not alike in properties. In fact, the properties change greatly across a given row, okay? So when we look at that, let's just look through here real quick just to kind of add to this. Um, say, for example, you're asked a question like, which um, two combinations of elements, let's go up here to this periodic table, which um, of these elements are similar, more similar than the others? And so, say, for example, they gave you um, sodium and rubidium, and then they gave you, um, let's say, iron and cobalt, and they even threw in another one, nickel. Uh, and then they said um, you have aluminum and germanium as a couple. And then they said you had, say, chlorine and bromine. Now, which one of them, which one of these couples would be more um, alike? Um, and as we look at this, we can tell because similarities run down a period or a family uh, and not, or down a group or a family, sorry about that, and not a period. So similarities, similarities run down a group or a family and they are not as, they are not similar in a period. So we could eliminate these uh, and these. And now we are asked which one of these are more alike. Now these are going to be alike, right?
differently with other elements. The alkaline metal, that's going to be in group one. Um, hydrogen is not a member of it. It is a non-metal. Uh, the rest of group one are soft silvery metals. They're very reactive, and you can uh, just kind of guess based on uh, which group they're in, why they're so highly reactive. But they're really highly active, reactive with water. They do conduct electricity. The alkaline metals uh, they're found in the first column of the periodic table, the shiny, kind of white, and it's usually kind of, they're kind of like cold metal. Not like warm butter, but like cold metal. You can think of pictures of the alkaline metal and the sort of clay like looking um, stuff that you have. Know, always get this kind of picture. And these are very expensive. Especially as you go. It's a little more dangerous. So you have the alkaline metals. Again, is this alkaline metal? Is it danger involved? It's going to be the acidity with water. Like clogging or a cloud with a cloud or a lot of magnesium that's in there because of the size of the reaction. They are the most reactive metals. They react violently with water. Alkaline metals are never found. Here's what you do need to know specifically. They're never found as free elements in nature. They're always bonded with another element. So these alkaline met metals are never found in nature just free. They're, they're always bound to another element. Now we come to uh, group 2A, um, alkaline earth metals. They are never found uncombined in nature as well. These elements are extremely reactive, not as reactive as the alkali metals, but they are still extremely reactive. I bet you can uh, kind of guess why based on its position on the periodic table. See, uh, you can predict fairly reasonably that uh, they will be reactive based on its position on the periodic table. And that has to do with your valence electrons, right? And you could tell the valence electrons by the group that it's in. But again, we see that they are reactive. They're used in flares and grenades and different things like that. Let's continue with the alkali earth metals. Um, they're white and malleable. They do conduct electricity. They're found in flares, flash grenades. All right, let's move on to the transition metals. The transition metals are great. I would put great here instead of good. Sorry about that. They're great conductors of heat and electricity. Not all of them, but generally they're great conductors. Some are used for jewelry and coins and different things like that. We know that. They can bond with many elements in a variety of shapes. And we have a picture of the transition metals. And remember, the lanthanides and the actinides are also part of the transition metals. But in order to keep uh, the D block in order, uh, they were pulled out, placed underneath. And it also helps us to keep the periodic table in a uh, one on one sheet of paper. Transition metals uh, include those elements in the B family. And we'll talk about that later. Um, these elements, these metals uh, you're probably most familiar with are like copper, tin, zinc, iron. Um, they're great conductors, good conductors of heat and electricity. Heat and electricity. Transition metals are known for their colors. We'll talk about that a little more because uh, we'll be asked questions like uh, which metal... times like in gen like in gen chem right or chem one uh, we call this whole area right here gases but I want you to notice that the boron family which we would call gases uh, in a gen chem class for ease um, they include metalloids and the rest are metals this family includes the most uh, the most abundant metal uh, in the crust 
along with oxygen. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But oxygen and aluminum are very, very prevalent in the Earth's crust. The boron family, um, group 3A, most are metals. Boron is a metalloid. The carbon family comes in group 4A. This family includes a non-metal, carbon, metalloids, and metals. The element carbon, again, notice this. Uh, gin chem, we say this whole block is gas, but uh, in AP chem, we start to really break this down. The family includes a non-metal, carbon, metalloids, and metals. Uh, the element carbon uh, is called the basis of life. This is uh, also has its own branch of chemistry, and that is going to be called org chem. Most people hate org chem, which we will touch, uh, actually dig deep into, but uh, basically carbon is formed in carbon change or chains uh, like CH3, right, or CH4. So it's basically a carbon with hydrogens around it, right, CH3, hydrogens around it. And this is called uh, an organic chain, okay? So let's go on. The carbon family contains metals, metalloids, and non-metals, and a non-metal. The nitrogen family, or what I call the family, uh, because I'm so specific. The nitrogen family is named after the element that makes up 78% of our atmosphere. That's important to know. Very, very, very prevalent in our atmosphere. The family includes a non-metal. Non-metals, metalloids, and metals. Again, notice the, how we dig deeper into this in AP Chem. This is no longer just the gas family. It is now called the non-metal family, but it does still contain metals and metalloids. Other elements in this family are phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, and bismuth. Uh, the nitrogen it can share electrons to form compounds. Remember when we talk about sharing electrons? We're talking about covalent bonding. Covalent bonding shares electrons. So uh, the nitrogen family is all about covalent bonding. It contains metals, metalloids, and a non and nonmetals. Uh, some like phosphorus are very reactive. Uh, we see phosphorus reacting down here um, in a uh, group of matches. And phosphorus is that a reason why matches smell the way they do. And you have the oxygen family or the chalcogen family. Most elements in this family share electrons. Uh, again, shared electrons means what? That's right, covalent, covalent bonding. Shared electrons, covalent bonding. Oxygen is the most ab abundant element in the Earth's crust. Again, it's kind of freaky with the aluminum thing, but we'll talk about that in more detail. It is extremely active and combines with almost all elements. Uh, oxygen is extremely active and combines with almost all elements. So, uh, round it up. Oxygen family contains metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. It's very reactive. Okay. Uh, you have the halogen family. The elements in this family are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Um, uh, halogens are the most active nonmetals. They are never found free in nature. Okay. So again, you can predict with general, uh, with real, uh, with fairly accurate means that these are going to all be uh, reactive based on their position on the periodic table, and uh, that is based on their valence electrons. Halogens are the most active nonmetals. They are never found free in nature. Never found free in nature. Um, used as disinfectants, used in light bulbs, all are nonmetals, very reactive. Uh, they're often bonded with elements from group one. Noble gases, these are inert, inert, let's see, yep, are called inert, which means they do not react, generally do not react. Uh, we'll see later that they do react in some way, but really they're uh, inert, they, uh, they have that inertia thing, they resist change. 
So here we have kind of a list of them. Uh, all the noble gases are found in small amounts in the Earth's atmosphere. The noble gases, obviously you got neon. Uh, each of these are going to exhibit a tiny different color uh, or a, um, a different color specifically. They're used as insulators over here in this door and in windows. The windows in our classroom are, are filled with argon. What that does is it uh, reduces the heat in the room that comes in. But they all exist as gases, nonmetals. They're not reactive with other elements generally. Generally not reactive. Okay? Um, yeah, let's keep moving. Then you have the rare earth elements, also known as the lanthanides and the actinides. The 30 rare earth elements, they're composed of the lanthanides and the actinide series. One element of the lanthanide series and most of the elements in the actinide series are called transuranium, which means synthetic or man-made. Uh, transuranium is going to be a word that you need to remember, and that means synthetic or man-made. Uh, also, uranium, and this picture should give you a clue, that these are radioactive. Uh, most of them, some of them specifically are radioactive. The rare earths are silver, silvery white, or gray metals. They do conduct electricity. Again, notice that the position on the periodic table is how we are predicting this stuff. If we didn't have them, we could predict if there was blank spaces like Dmitry Mendeleev let, left, we could predict them based on their position on the periodic table. All right, here's uh, a really cool periodic table that you kind of zoom in on and check it out. It kind of gives uh, specific um, things that each of these elements are used for. It's just a picture periodic table. I kind of like it. Zoom in, check it out, and um, we'll come back to this uh, in the next lesson.